I guess what I'm saying is last week, the silver gold ratio, if you look at that sort of thing, and I do, uh, was trading at 92 at the high, at the very high end for amount of ounces of silver you need to buy one ounce of gold. And then it just came off to like 88. I think the market between now and say election day, right, which we're going to talk about next, is going to chop sideways uh, with some short covering spikes in silver. Gold is its own animal. It can go somewhere. And I'm just saying that that for the last three months, gold and silver were different markets, you know, and, and now they seem to be starting to resync. So let, let's see what happens over the next couple of months. Market uncertainty in 2024 should persist, opening pathways for increased hedging, which should benefit gold and silver. Gold prices jumped 12% within the past year as the dollar retreated on the expectation that inflation would start to subside and rate cutting would occur in 2024. Silver didn't see the same strength as its more expensive counterpart, but still showed resilience amid a stock market comeback. Vince Lancey, managing partner at Echo Bay Partners LLC, notes gold and silver are showing signs of resynchronization, recommending monitoring market dynamics for insights in the coming months. He states the silver-gold ratio while expecting occasional silver spikes until the election. Silver rallies as the gold-silver ratio pulls back below 87.50. From a big-picture point of view, the gold-silver ratio continues to move lower after an unsuccessful attempt to settle above the 92 level. Meanwhile, he mentions a pattern where small speculators sell silver during economic downturns, but buy gold for geopolitical risk hedging. Gold demand will win a pronounced boost from geopolitical uncertainty this year, an industry report predicted Wednesday after the precious metal and haven investment hit a record high price in 2023. The World Gold Council said the commodity would 2024 continue to benefit from strong buying by central banks, which would help offset a slowdown in consumer demand owing to elevated prices and weaker economic growth. While discussing market dynamics, Vince emphasizes the significant influence of China. He points out that traders tend to favor silver and gold investments whenever there are hints of economic stimulus from China. While gold has been drifting lower only to bounce after finding strong support ahead of $2,000, silver has, almost as per usual, experienced a roller coaster month, at one point slumping to a two-month low before recovering strongly, supported by a China stimulus-led rally in industrial metals. Now, we present the clips of Vince Lancey's insights from his recent interview with Peter Grandich. Before we continue to delve into this discussion, please subscribe to our channel and activate the bell icon for timely updates. There's been a behavioral pattern in gold and silver going back for longer than I think people are willing to admit. And that behavioral, or willing to, to know, and that behavioral pattern is at the retail and small fund level, speculators and people that feel like they're trading macroeconomically, they will sell silver when they think the economy is going to do poorly. Like they will treat silver like it's copper more than they'll treat it like it's gold. And then they'll buy gold as a hedge against geopolitical risk or or what have you. So so this this group of people, which isn't massively large, but they are they are in terms of reasonably short and intermediate term flows, they will drive the market absent news. So for example, if this group is worried about the Fed uh, raising rates, they will sell silver. They won't buy gold. If this group feels that the Fed's going to ease rates, they will buy silver. Now, when you combine the economic aspect, which I just described, with, with um, geopolitical risk. So, for example, if the Fed's going to not ease rates and there's a war in the Middle East, well, they will literally buy gold and sell silver, this group. They will trade it like it's a copper thing. And that's why you will frequently see, if you're a gold-silver person, you'll frequently see gold rally and silver not, especially when a war starts. And then after about a month of going sideways, you'll see silver will just spike 4% out of nowhere. And you'll say, what was that about? Well, that was all these people saying, oh, it's not working out. Let me buy my silver back. And it's a thin market and they get, they get, you know, they get run into the boards, you know, as a, as hockey guys would say. Um, so, so there's that that group. Now, the reason I'm I'm talking about them now is because for the last say three or four months, 
uh, this group, this cohort, if you want to call them that, has been long gold because they thought of the geopolitical risk it was worth owning gold. And they've been short silver, short oil, short copper, all of that stuff they've been short because they're long stocks and they never want to get out of their stocks if they're married to them, you know, for tax reasons, you don't want to sell them. So they hedge their political risk, you know, by buying puts or by selling precious metals uh, or silver or copper or industrial stuff. And, and, and that, and that when they're right, that works for months, for months, you just watch, you just watch silver and copper just grind lower. And that's them constantly just throwing a little bit of money in. Anyway, most people are talking about a chance of a Fed ease coming, whether you think it's going to happen or not. This group in the last, say, five days has started covering and they started covering their shorts. So this group has been, you know, doing nothing in gold and buying silver, buying copper, buying oil. And you can see if you look at the charts with, you know, yesterday as an exception, oil has been creeping higher for a couple of weeks now. And silver, you know, which doesn't creep, just kind of spiked. Uh, and, and now we've maintained ourselves in the $23 area. And, you know, by no means is that, a, is that a short squeeze or a home run. But the point is the CTA group, the CTA cohort, those people are uh, starting to believe uh, or fear a Fed easing. And so they're covering. When you combine that with China, which is, you know, really having a hard time right now, and uh, uh, they need to stimulate their economy. Well, every time China talks like they're going to stimulate their economy, they're out there. The, 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 they're out there. They're, they're traders. They're front runners, for lack of a better word. They're buying silver and gold. I guess what I'm saying is last week, the silver gold ratio, if you look at that sort of thing, and I do, uh, was trading at 92, the very high end for amount of ounces of silver you need to buy one ounce of gold. And then it just came off to like 88. So I guess what I'm saying is I think the market between now and say election day, right, which we're going to talk about next, is going to chop sideways uh, with some short covering spikes in silver. Gold is its own animal. It can go somewhere. And I'm just saying that that for the last three months, gold and silver were different markets, you know, and, and now they seem to be starting to resync. So let, let's see what happens over the next couple of months. During the interview, Vince Lancy pointed out key economic shifts in Japan and China. Japan is removing stock taxes, which might lead to more money moving from China to Japan. According to data from Japan Exchange Group, foreign investors pumped $2.6 billion into the Japanese stock market last week, adding to $6.5 billion the week before. That is a stark shift from the roughly $3.6 billion that was yanked out in December. Moreover, Vince expands his analysis to Argentina's pro-capitalism stance and potential to attract funds from Brazil. He agrees with Morgan Stanley's positive view on Japan's changing tax policies, predicting a Reagan revival. Let's get back to the interview. Japan is removing taxation from stock investment, while China, even though it's trying to stimulate, is still under a, a, a centralized, you know, it's a state of, it's authority, it's a controlled market, right? So, so they're not, they're not removing taxes. They're probably increasing restrictions. Anyway, so I looked at that little thing and I was like, okay, this is really kind of cool. You know, Morgan Stanley was saying, Japan is up, it's still a buy. China's down. It may be a buy, but it won't be as good as Japan because Japan is changing their rules. It's like a Reagan thing. You know, we're lowering capital gains taxes. The first thing I said was, we're sucking money out of China into Japan. We're taking more money. This is us attacking China. You know, like we, our, our ally is Japan. Japan needs to get out of this 30-year, you know, thing. And they're going to lower, they're fiscally lowering taxes. It's like they have a little Japanese Ronald Reagan over there, you know, doing stuff. And if that takes hold, you're going to have, you know, a revival like you haven't seen. Meanwhile, China is moving into a Japanese deflationary situation. And it's fascinating. And 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 I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. So I read that and I really absorbed that. And then I went back and I thought, I'm like, you know, what about Argentina? And then I just looked at this map I have uh, on, the, on the globe and... Uh, and I was like, Argentina, I believe, right? I have no evidence of this, but if you look at the behavior, Malay is an American ally, right? Uh, you want to label him ideologically as a libertarian or a hypocrite or this or that. I don't care. But his policies are free market policies. 
And so once upon a time, the United States used to go into Latin American countries and try and see democracy. And that's where all these little revolutions, these counter-revolutions are ran contra. But now we're not doing that. Now we're seeding capitalism. So now you've got this guy Malay down there going, capitalism, you know, socialism bad. Cap even though, though we're turning socialistic because of the current administration, you got Malay down there going, capitalism, entrepreneurship, you know, get rid of, you know, government. And where's Argentina? Argentina's right next to Brazil. And Brazil is one of the BRICS. And that's the B in BRICS. You know, and there's our economic, we're going to suck money from Brazil into Argentina. So I went, Japan and China, Argentina and Brazil. And I went, I don't know how we're going to get to Russia. But I went, you know what? The world is turning libertarian, even if we're not. And, and, uh, and, and therefore, when I put those pieces together to bring it back, I don't normally agree with bank analysis just because, you know, I feel like there's a lot of bias in it. But I agree with Morgan Stanley on this. I mean, uh, hopefully that's not a kiss of death for them either. But Japan is basically doing a Reagan revival, you know, and Argentina is doing, uh, I don't know, it's like Ron Paul got elected president down there. So I, I think, although I wouldn't be one to short China, and I'm actually long a little bit of China stocks right now, uh, it blew me away, but Japan might be a buy. They're, like, I think institutional money in the West is flying into Japan right now because of the taxation changes. And I think China's suffering because of it. And and that's it. That's like a five-year trade. But I, I, believe, I believe that now, and I need to look into it more. The precious metal sector has spent most of January consolidating following strong gains during the fourth quarter last year when gold rose 11.4% and silver 7.2% as the U.S. rate focus finally turned away from more hikes to cuts. What aspects make the future trajectory of gold and silver particularly intriguing for investors? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you find this video informative, don't forget to support our channel and turn on notifications to stay informed about our latest videos. See you in the next video.